Thanks for tuning in. This video will be part hobby vlog and part painting demo. In working on my salamander's backlog, I began working on one of my Redemptor Dreadnoughts. I thought it would be a good opportunity to test out and develop some new techniques. Specifically, this gradient style panel painting, seen on this ironclad dread on the Games Workshop webpage. I've always dug this classic aesthetic, and I finally felt okay about taking a stab at it. So I did. And by my estimation, it was turning out quite well. I shared this work in progress picture with my local playgroup, and it was brought to my attention that my local Games Workshop's Summer of the Brush painting competition was taking place the upcoming weekend, which at the time of recording this video was this past weekend. So I continued painting away, did my basing scheme, threw on some decals, and gave it a good varnish in time for the event. And I'm quite happy to report that I won in my entered category, which is probably my biggest achievement in this hobby. Similar to the previous ever chosen event, the environment was welcoming as were the participants and nearly every entry on the competition table was intimidating. But this time the grading scheme was different. Voting was still a component, but votes were done without names involved. And there was a secondary component, a judge who looked at each entry and scored it based on a rubric. That score was then combined with submitted votes, which created the final score. Besides my opinion that this process is superior, I was also able to gleam that a large portion of my score was due to the panel gradient work I executed. So I figured I should share the technique and process on how I executed the panel shading. Okay, here we have the current model in my salamander's backlog I'm working on, this Relic Contemptor. Um, you can see it's partially started, but I'm going to work on the back panels of his legs to demonstrate the panel shading. And we're going to use these three colors to start with. We have Nocturne Green, Warpstone Green, this is Instar's Grass Green Matte, but they color match to uh, Warpstone Green from the Citadel range. And we have Goss Blaster Green. So to start with, I'm going to create the uh, well, three swatches on my palette of each color. and. Uh, this is going to serve as the the range selector, which will allow me to, uh, you know, mix the colors as I need and, and grab the uh, grab and control the colors as desired. Because sometimes, you know, mistakes are going to happen and you have to come back and touch up, so it's useful to lay out your colors in that way. Um, so for consistency on the panel shading I did on the Redemptor, um, we're going to go in this diagonal direction, and I simply start by uh, picking the darkest color. Um, you probably could build up from a medium tone, but for the purpose of defining uh, the extents, um, I find that the visual aid granted by starting from a really dark and really light base um, helps guide the process along because um, you can immediately um, you immediately get the uh, the transition you're looking for it's just not gradiated uh, yet it's effectively a, a two-tone gradient and um, then we begin layering the in-between tones to uh, smoothen it out which you can see I'm doing here, grabbing the our medium green and applying it from the top because for this scheme I want it to be darker at the bottom obviously so I'm grabbing the lighter tone starting it at the top and as I brush it across the panel um, stepping downwards as I do, we're getting less and less paint on the brush. The paint that's lost as we're going from top to bottom helps with that gradient and 
um, you're kind of letting the brush do the work for you in that sense. Just because you've been stroking the brush across the pan, there'll be less paint on it. Um, you can see here, there's this part on the back of the leg near the middle where the paint has begun to dry, and I kind of smeared it in a, in a way. You'll see that this is actually pretty easy to clean up. We just have to let that area dry. And uh, with the Goss Blaster Green, I'm not using it straight because it's just way too strong, so I'm mixing it in with our uh, Warp Stone. And I'm, it's kind of, you, I'm really doing this in a sense based on taste. Um, I want the contrast to be stronger, and I felt that where it was, it could be a stronger gradient. Like you don't want to go too extreme or else it becomes um, well, I mean maybe you do want it to be extreme but uh, I kind of appreciate I don't want it to become totally black and totally white so here I'm just gonna let it dry so I can continue working on it and immediately after I stopped recording I realized I could just work on the opposite leg while our uh, previous one was drying. So, uh, since I had the paint out, I figured it'd be a waste not to, so we're just going to work on this one as if it was already in the oven, so to speak. It's also at this point I realize my brush is really um, at, at its end, and I probably need to pick up a, a few new ones. But I think for the purpose of this demo, and uh, maybe a few more paint jobs uh, I'll, I'll manage. It's just really showing its age. Alright, so with the opposite side dryer, I can begin to work on that a bit more. Just trying to smoothen out that gradient to be... You don't want it perfectly smooth, because you, it, in a weird way, you want the brush streaks to show a little bit so it's clear that it was an airbrush, because um, it's kind of impressive in its own right, from, from a purist perspective. Uh, yeah, so here I'm just doing in the smaller areas of the armor panels, and when you're doing the smaller areas, it's actually really easy. You can basically just do a two-tone uh, gradient, right? Just grab your medium or your... Um, you know, I wouldn't go from Nocturne Green to Goss Blaster, but you could go from um, either end to the middle tone. And the human eye will just kind of auto-blend them together. But obviously only for small detailed panels. Alright, so here we are where it has dried, and you can see it's uh, starting to look fairly smooth. So here I'm just going to continue working on those blends. Yeah, I mean obviously this is... If you're committing to this style of panel shading, you're... You know, gonna increase your uh, time required to paint a model, certainly. But in the pursuit of new techniques and uh, that classic Dreadnought aesthetic, um, I really dig it. I think I'm going to do this for a bunch of my Salamander's Dreadnoughts, or at least the ones in my backlog. Yeah, and here's what I was talking about with the small areas that can be just two-toned. Because they're so small, it's uh, it's a non-issue, really. Okay, so here's the one area where I'm increasing the ratio of Goss Blaster to Warp Stone substantially, and it's only for the purpose of edge highlighting. Because, again, you want these to be a, a degree stronger in terms of the, the contrast of, uh, of your gradients. In my mind, I don't want these 
edge highlights to ever be in the same range as the panels. Okay, so right there at the bottom of his leg plate, you can see I made an error. That's it's not a big deal because we can easily, uh, you know, we have our wet palette and we can just grab our tones and wet blend that away. And there we are. That's pretty much it for how I go about panel shading. That was my experience with Summer of the Brush 2019, and my demo on panel shading. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, or want to see more or less of this style of content, leave a comment below. If you have any tips or suggestions, I would be glad to hear them, and if you have any questions, ask away. And if you want to help this channel grow, consider subscribing for weekly videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll hope to see you guys in the next one.